Thrombocytes, also known as platelets, they're involved in blood clotting and wound healing. But what exactly are they, and how do they do what they do? My name is Leslie Samuel, and that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. So let's do it. So you get a cut and you start bleeding. Fortunately for you, it doesn't go on forever. Depending on the size of the cut, you may see that within a few seconds or a few minutes, the blood stops flowing. And this is great. I mean, you don't want to just go on bleeding and bleeding. Then you can get anemia and that's not fun. This stopping of the flow of blood is called hemostasis. That's the fancy word for this video, hemostasis. And platelets, aka thrombocytes, are a very important part of this process. First off, let's address an issue. I refer to these structures as thrombocytes, and while that is a correct name, it gives you the wrong impression. You see, the prefix thrombo refers to clotting of blood. Okay, that makes sense. But the suffix sites refers to cells. And that's where the issue comes in. While, yes, these are involved in blood clotting, they aren't technically cells. Instead, they are fragments of a specific type of cell. In my earlier video, I spoke about how blood is formed, or hemopoiesis, and we learned about the megakaryocyte. This is a specific type of cell that develops in bone marrow as a result of the release of a hormone called thrombopoietin. This is released by the kidneys and the liver. Once the megakaryocyte matures, it grows these extensions on its surface. These extensions will go through the walls of the capillaries in the bone marrow, and then pieces of the extensions will just kind of break off. These pieces are made up of small bits of cytoplasm surrounded by little pieces of the membrane of the cell. And these broken off pieces are the platelets, the thrombocytes. They're pretty small, about two to four micrometers in diameter. And we typically have anywhere from 150,000 to 450,000 per microliter of blood. Now that's a lot. I mean, it's not like the 5 million red blood cells in the same amount of blood, but it's way more than the white blood cells, which can be like five to 10,000. So yeah, it's a good amount. Once we have these platelets in the blood, they're basically circulating via the blood vessels. About a third of them go to the spleen and they get stored there until there's a need. Whenever there's some kind of damage to a blood vessel, which would be what causes bleeding, these platelets, they get activated. They go to the site of damage and they kind of plug things up to stop the flow of blood. As I mentioned earlier, this process is called hemostasis, and we'll go more deeply into that topic in the next video. Now, that's not the only thing they do. They'll also release a number of growth factors, and these growth factors help the healing process to take place. They cause tissue growth and repair, especially connective tissue. Now, of course, you want the flow of blood to stop, but you also want healing to take place, and the thrombocytes will help that as well. Now, before we finish, I want to talk about some issues that can arrive with platelets. If a person's platelet count is low, that's called thrombocytopenia. And as you would expect, if that's the case, that person is less likely to form clots, and you get excessive bleeding when there's some kind of injury or damage. And on the other hand, if there are too many platelets, that's called thrombocytosis. And that's a problem because that can cause excessive clotting. That can lead to having clots in your blood vessels that obstruct the flow of blood. It can lead to heart attack, stroke, and that's not good. As we've said in so many of our videos, it's all about balance. Platelets are important. They serve important functions in the healing process. And in order for those functions to happen the right way, we need to have the right balance. Now, in the next video, we're going to go deeper into this process of hemostasis. And I'll see you over there. Peace.